Dr. El Anil Elias, who will be uh, speaking on some of these national issues, uh, the devil in the country as it stands right now. The federal government, lawmakers, as well as security agencies across the country are on their toes and are appealing with protest planners to share off whatever plans that they have on the way. Well, you're welcome, Dr. Anil. Thank you for having me. This is a very, very interesting developing story where yeah. almost all the national dailies across the country are talking about the same thing. August 1st is drawing nearer. A protest is brewing. There is no face. There is no name behind the protest. What do you make of this? Well, first and foremost, I want to uh, say well done to the Minister of Information and Human Interests because we can see a, a lot of PR because for about eight people, most people that are in this meeting actually sp uh, spoke about the, the August and protest and about the uh, government perspective that uh, the Indians should shun a uh, uh, protest. And Looking at the right of one of them, you know, we saw a governor of uh, the Jigawa State who said that we should go and pray <laughs> instead of a uh, protest. We also saw from Falana who said that we should go, there should be along with the leadership of the, uh, the protest. However, the, I don't think we have a leader for that protest uh, as as for as of now, and that's a serious uh, problem. You know, when it is faceless, it's, it's pretty difficult. We don't know who to actually appeal to. And now we can cast our mind back to the uh, issue of NSAS. I do NSAS. I think that's one of the negative effects of NSAS. I mean, I think it even affects the uh, youth to achieve the actual uh, aim because there was no leadership. The supposed leadership was actually uh, faceless. So I think there must be a uh, a leader to actually uh, work on this. Then you could also see a uh, large article uh, uh, on, on the rider as well who said that uh, those that protest in 2012 are telling Nigerians to, you know, that they are professional uh, protesters. So I, I think uh, if I like to go down to the rider of the uh, Inspector General of Police as well who said that uh, you have the right to protest but don't resort to violence. I think that's quite instructive because this is much more professional than to have say you can protest but tell us where you want to put it so that we can actually provide the adequate uh, uh, security so i think that is the major so going forward i think government need to be strategic more uh from now till august for still a very uh long time that government can intervene but the thing is there must be an immediate uh, uh solution because if you look at most things that government is doing is about intervention so we need to look at the root cause of what people want to put this and government should provide a solution for that yeah, well, uh, Dr. Aliu, uh, I like the fact that you, you know, hammered on the Jigawa State Governor's statement about people praying and not protesting. I mean, uh, many would argue that this isn't really um, a, a right political statement to make in a heated quality like this. Uh, a protest is brewing that everybody, even the president, is anticipating will really not turn out so well. Yet a governor is asking people to pray. Don't you think this is rather misplaced? Right. I, I think it's a very funny uh, statement from the government who came into political uh, providing team in the house and not contest, not do anything to become to become president and keep on place so I become governor as it is. It's act of struggle that made him to be a governor. Because can you become a governor without contesting primary, without engaging political process, without even being uh, contesting with other political political parties quite a decent of uh, uh discarding people from their uh, aim so i think such uh governors should rather face uh, the reality and provide solution to nigerians problem i want i, I was thinking you will have engaged better and tell people you know these are what we have been providing this is what we are doing the circumstances is global you know give other excuses not tell also most things that nigerians are praying for has been done by God over time. Another client I know in that area asking God for that again. They are moving ahead. Electricity, you know, 247 has been there for long. You know, farm produce, <laughs> the process is been there, the mechanized farming has been there. So why what are you praying God to God for? It's for this leader to just get serious and do the thing the right way as it's supposed to be. So it is their own fault now. People like this they are not doing their work and saying telling people to pray to to God. Are you going to pray to God to provide school fees for you? Or you go and work to get school fees to pay for your, your children. So I think that's a misplaced statement. Such person should be cautioned for that uh, 
I mean, leader, a governor at that level, I think that's unacceptable from him. Well, well, you know, a lot of people might argue that this particular protest is um, a nationwide protest for everybody, not necessarily channeled towards the grievances of the youth. You also rightly pointed out that the protest doesn't have a face yet. It doesn't have a name yet. We don't know who is behind it. Yet the, the president, the lawmakers, the IGP, everybody is appealing to the youth to shelf whatever plans they have, to remain calm, to wait for responses from the federal government. Uh, who is really, what demography of, of, of people are we looking at behind this protest? Because if on the sure. other hand, you would also see that people like Peter O'B and the likes of Elijah Atiku Abubakar are, be, are supporting the protesters and yet we don't see a face. Right, I think uh, first and foremost, I'm not a supporter of uh, violence. I don't want to support a violence or uh, protest. I think protest should be organized in a good manner if at all it will hold. In fact, if there is a solution, if President could give us a national broadcast and give us a, a, a to Z of what he's trying to do that will bring support to people, I think we wouldn't need to go for a protest. However, protest should be organized and be, there should be caution and there should not be pro and anti because if you look at the protest if you, let's look at NSAS in Abuja uh, at a point the NSAS people are going but we see anti, anti protest, protest which are, uh, most people allegedly said this government sponsored that they want to you know, and that's what actually brought about the violence yes. because when you are protesting and you are going in a peaceful manner but you see an opposite side also having placard you know the 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 what you are the saying they do a rift so i think that's what we should uh, guide against but in the uh, uh, issue of uh, why the protest itself well the hashtag we are seeing is about hunger and hunger does not recognize youth old age even child there is no information for for such yes hunger doesn't categorize who to strike it is when there is no availability you fell into hunger so i only want to agree that it's youth protest i will agree that from the hashtag we are seeing it's about hunger so however you know when it's come to protest youth have more strength you know they could take things much more deeper further with more, Co agility. With more agility thank you compared to the old so I, I don't want this to I don't want to look as if it's much more of you. You know, we are not saying it's for unemployment. We will say it's averaging the youth. We are not saying maybe it's for opportunities or job opportunities. It's actually for hunger. So and hunger doesn't no face. Perhaps if you look at the uh, current uh, Nigerian challenges, you agree with me that hunger is ravaging even though the poor and the rich now. Because the fact remains that if you go to markets. You don't have a special market. The amount I'm buying tomato is the amount you are buying tomato. Yes. So and also you have seen you have also seen a departure or bigger increment over two fifty percent of the high commodities uh, we used to buy before. Look at rice. Maybe it was thirty something now, almost hundred thousand. A middle or uh, of uh, of beans from maybe one thousand something to about four thousand uh, something. You know, look at the, that gap. Perhaps and the purchasing power is not actually. Uh, there, that is the actual problem. So I think Onga does not recognize who you are. It's strike when you have the purchasing power to purchase what you need. Well, well, let's let's uh, take a look back at um, the protest that held back during uh, President Rudolph Jonathan's time. Uh, y there are a lot of people in this regime who actively led uh, those protests back in the day in 2012, if right. you remember. Right. But yet again, we see. An APC chieftain warning against the protest, saying it will trigger chaos and set Nigeria 20 mm -hmm. years back. If they were allowed to protest back then, what is the tendency of, you know, the, the protesters who are planning this particular one causing chaos in any way? They are, they are only protesting. I don't see them brandishing ammunitions or guns or saying that they're going to cause mayhem. It's... According to reports, they are only protesting against bad governance. Shouldn't they be allowed to exercise their civil and uh, basic rights and duties as citizens of the country? Well, I recall during that uh, period, I was glued to my TV because we were in Abuja and see what is actually going on in Lagos. And I saw that it was about 10 days, uh, 12 or 12 days uh, protest. Yes. And our leader, currently, most of them, they've 
to come and speak at the protest. Yes. So they are part of the protest. When this one comes, he speaks his own mind, you know. Yes. Another one comes, speaks his own mind. Days like that. And we have seen even our activists, even our legal luminary. Even some of our spiritual leaders are also uh, part of those things. So I, I don't think they should at this point in time say nobody should should protest. But we should protest within the law. And how do we protest within the law? I've made uh, a, 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 a kind of uh, example of it that there shouldn't be anti when there is you know there is pro already. So they should not even go the same way because that's what's actually been the problem. So I think every Nigerian have the right to protest. But every Nigerian does not also have the right to protest in a way that will harm other uh, person in terms of violence. So I think what IG has said is what I would I'd like to follow. Every Nigerian have the right to protest, but protest within the, the law. So how do you protest within the law? Because even if you ask me, I'm not uh, the way I'm seeing things, there may not even be this protest. Why do you think so? Yes, because I think that's uh, another thing we need to review. If you look at it in the past, uh, most protests are not protests that they will, t- they will give a date to. You know, it will just like ENSA just starts. You know, it starts. Look at the current one going on in Bangladesh. I think about 50 people have lost their life and it's youth driven in that country. You know, it's a consistent thing. It will happen here. It will happen here. You wouldn't even know what to come. But this one that is looking, you know, where this. If I, if I, if, if you ask me, I think government is even, uh, how do I call it, um, amplifying the protest. Than the protest that you know, I think government is amplifying the protest more than the protester now because if you see government is trying to you know, say something about the IG will come out, the Minister of Information. If you look at all the newspapers uh, today, it's about protest, protest, and protest. So for me, I think government is amplifying it uh, more than it's supposed to be because the first thing I think they should they should do, especially maybe from our DSS, is to make their findings. Yes. Get to know people that are behind the protest, people that are planning it, and actually find a way of uh, persuading them, not persecuting them. Because that's another thing we need to look at very well. So when you get to know people that are behind it, please don't persecute them. Because persecution will lead to so more protest. protests. And that's why we should, and that's why those people are trying to hide their face. Because when you get to know them, you will find a way of persecuting them, bringing them an offense, you know, telling them they are, you know, anti government. What do we call it? Uh, treason, a lot of uh, legal time will come into it, and that's why people are, f- are scared of the persecution. Even those that are protesting in 2012 were not persecuted, and they now find their way to government today. I think there is no room why we should say others should not uh, put up. Perhaps during that time, the protest was against is it first subsidy remover, yes. among other things. But this time around, the protest is about hunger. So when you say hunger, I think government should come out. What I think government should do now is that they should come out and reel out all their efforts how to really reduce hunger in the country and go forward what they want to put in place to solve Nigerian problems. Well, I, I like when you said um, that, the, that the government is amplifying the protest more than it should, uh, that even the, plan pro- the uh, protest planners are not given so much voice to what they are planning to do as much as the government is doing. Now, on the front page of the Punch newspaper, uh, there is a story that the SGF ministers and other stakeholders are to hold an emergency meeting today with regards to uh, the rally that is, um, you know, brewing. Right. Do you think instead of holding emergency meetings, the government should have by now figured out who is really behind it and engaged in dialogue with them. I mean, it's not so difficult to find out who is planning a protest that is already in the ears and of and ears of every every Nigerian out there. It's all over the news. It's everywhere. If the hashtag could be out there, certainly there's there has to be a way to find the hashtag, the person behind the hashtag. Right. I I, I think uh, even our federal government, like I said have bothered themselves on a lot of things that in a place to use that power to actually build on solutions. Recall that you you agree with me that protest itself is going to happen in the states. Right? Yes. More than the federal the government. Yes. So I, I, I was expecting those states to start strategizing, you know, engaging the likely protester. You know, the, every state know who can actually lead what. But, but and why do leaders across all these leaders, even both uh, NYC, uh, you know, a lot of youth organizations need to be engaged by now that please 
uh, further down you know identify who can do this you know do you have to do that too and like i said don't persecute these people only try to identify them caution them why you as government will be doing your own path to make sure that this hunger because the, the, the issue of hunger is reality and it's quite glaring to everyone you know it's a matter of taste that if you eat you know you eat if you don't eat you actually know you don't eat and it's affecting nigeria so i think government should use their strength in providing more super more practical pragmatic solutions to nigerians rather than using all their strength to be calling emergency meeting when do they call emergency meeting on hunger now there's emergency meeting because there's a protest against hunger you know it's, it's a contradiction yes. and that's why we need to start focusing on solving the problem when it is brewing not allowing to you know get to this uh, this level now the government is saying we should pay right after you, you know the, the, the uh, state uh, yes. is asking mm. citizens to pray mm. while the Yobe state governor uh yesterday made a remark that there would be no protest in Yobe state that's um governor my well that, that statement is also uh very funny and laughable because uh, when you say there will be protesting you are just speaking for yourself because you, you think you can man the state but what happened in other states may speak over, over to your state. state because you recall MSAS, you know, it was not in Abuja, it was not in Kano, you know, but before you know, it starts somewhere and it and starts, it all over you know, country. it was all over the country. And you know, we are in a, a global period now whereby someone will just tweet here and it will go viral. And when it goes viral, it doesn't, it will get to the right people and they will start taking action. Pers perhaps. We must also be careful with this protest so that it will not be hijacked, you know. And that's why I think government is trying to say Obi yes. Matiku that is bringing about issue of the uh, Onanuga. Yes. So I think government need to do something urgent to make sure they caution these people and stop targeting these leaders. These leaders uh, on their own may not even know what is happening. Yeah, well, uh, doctor, you you know th there have been uh, fingers pointing at people who contested for the last general elections and lost. Talking about the uh, Labour Party uh, candidates Peter Obi and uh, the presidential uh, uh, candidates of the People's Democratic Party, Elijah Etiko Abubakar, and yet still we have these two people uh, supporting the protest in you know via their words and all of that. Uh, is this confirming the allegation that this protest could be politically motivated, according to the FCT minister Wiki? Right, you know, you, you know, you cannot rule out uh, politics uh, from such uh, uh, problems. And the first reason is that once there is hunger, and hunger is reality, you expect opposition to take advantage. And that's what exactly happened during the uh, PDP Jonathan uh, era. You know, once and I, I can tell you that even this, I think PDP and and AP, uh, Labour Party are not even doing as good as. Uh, you know, APC APC then because yeah. APC will do their own an organized manner, come out with information and organ. It was live one that was championing that information that time. So and it was much more organized. So I think for for everyone to be saying that in the direction of the uh, Labour Party and uh, uh, PDP, I think it's not far from the truth because if there is a fact that there is hunger, the opposition will say Nigerians, haven't you seen? We tell you to vote for for us. You did not vote for us. Look at what is happening now. Vote for us next time so that such thing will tame it and will reduce it. So it's quite acceptable. However, the re original planner may not even be these people. They are only lending their voice that truly there's hunger in Nigeria and that hunger needs to be uh, you know, tamed so that it will not really lead to uh, something worse. Remember, we're not only fighting hunger in Nigeria, we are fighting insecurity. As well as a serious problem, and hunger is a function of okay. insecurity. If you look at it very well, critically, because why do we even have hunger? And perhaps beyond beyond family too, you also agree with me that this hunger is also a function of current government policy direction, because the policy direction, they according to them, they want to prefer solution uh, that will give us a better economy yes. without looking at the uh, negative externality that will arise so if you look at first subsidy remover it's just one of the major thing that is giving us a problem and how does it give us problem simply means that you know because of first subsidy remover 
you know, people now pay more uh, for transportation. And so if there is actually food in maybe Aquaibo, and you want to transport food down to Lagos or to Abuja, more. it costs more than... So practically, the farmers will have to shift and the marketer will have to shift the cost to the uh, consumer. And the consumer now does not have the purchasing power again. So, so what, what, what you're saying is that there is a, an entirely um, a long chain of ripple effects that firstly, the removal of fuel subsidy right. has caused the high um, you know, rate of PMS now, thereby also affecting high cost of transporting right. goods and commodities, including food to different parts of the country. And if people can't transport these uh, commodities, they become more expensive. And if they are expensive, they can purchase them. If they can't purchase them, there is hunger. There is hunger. It's a ripple effect. It's a ripple effect. And government actually said they want to give us CNG. You know, CNG would have come to really uh, cushion the effect. But up to now, myself, one of the named CNG uh, bosses. No, location where you can convert your vehicle. Yes. I went there myself and said, please, I want to convert. Because the, what we are trading off for uh for PMS is quite high so when i got there they said they have not received the materials to actually start the i was wondering and it's been all over that their yeah, conversion the they now tell me that i should put my phone number that when it is ready they will call me that shows that we are not ready yet a particular place along airport road in abuja where they, you can convert i can tell you if you go there today it might take you three months before you'll be invited you know to do the conversion so uh, i think government should find a way of speeding this there should be emergency meeting on such thing there's emergency uh uh importation of all these uh materials government should bond it and make it private i fear and that is what that is what the the fg and you know lawmakers and all the stakeholders should be holding that is what they should do emergency do not amplifying uh a protest because if you are, if i'm okay and i feel well when i hear protest look at my window i'll close it back because i think i'm okay yeah, so okay. most people will think in that direction too so there's no hunger there will not be reason in fact the protest is not new there have been protests in Lagos Silver Valley in Badon called a Bim power yes Bim power simply means we are hungry it's not a protest. a protest it's a protest but it's only this one is appearing to be much more organized and much more planned but those ones happen abruptly two three passengers come together and say no we are then hungry that there is immediate solution but the thing is you know resonating and that's why government should not sleep on their hours don't allow this hunger to resonate once it resonates it brings about problem we have seen two sides of protest now in uh kenya that the protest government come and will be uh, tell the, the, the people that will not increase the finance uh yes. bill again we will revert back we will do this and i think 20 people have lost their life so it's also a protest in sudan that led sudan to this trouble yeah. area yeah. then the civil war and i'm not sure they will come out of it anytime soon people are losing losing their life but the world is even abandoning them with their problem so i will urge the Nigerians to please if you want to protest please do it in a decent way don't let it lead us to sudan if it's kenya the sacrifice that Kenya too is not easy. We should also learn from what happened in MSAS. And recall, at the State House Assembly, at the State House in the new villa, Sheo Sani told President Mo, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu that we are one of the people that used to sponsor us protest. to protest back then. back then. Most people that protest during MSAS, they are still in prison, languishing. Please find a way to bring about give them suko yes let them be out of it nigeria should not forget all those statements because those statements they are weighty and it means a lot to them so we should start thinking in that direction so but the people that can actually solve the problem still remain our leaders the federal government well talking about um, our leaders a lot of um, institutions have come out to denounce and wash their hands of the protests institutions like uh, can a lot of uh, uh, academic uh, organizations and and the rest there everybody is taking their hands off it I, I mean people are envisaging that the protest will be violent but it hasn't happened yet and we don't even have an assurance that it would happen 
if all of these groups are washing their hands of the protests, uh, Dr. Liu, are we seeing the protests failing before 1st of August? Well, we wouldn't say the protests will fail, but it may not hold August 1st. You know, it's a two different things. Yes. You know, a dated event that's, uh, that will happen and we have seen a lot of, uh, you know, agitation not to make it happen. There are different, uh, uh, different meetings, you know, the newspapers, the PR, I think it's government PR, everybody's looking at it not to happen. Now, th I think that's a good one, government, to make sure that things really does, but it may not happen at on that day. Yeah. The, according to Khan, they are saying that they are not part of it. They are urging, but remember, someone like she, uh, Shigumi also said, don't protest now. Protest in the next six months. I think by January, I read it where he actually uh, made mention yeah, that statement. Uh, that statement. So if you look at that his statement too, you know, it's give government opportunity to have solve a lot of uh, uh, problems. So that's why I said what I think government should do is that they should come out and keep talking about the protest. But if President Bola Metinubu in his wisdom and his handlers think uh, the protest may happen, he should do a national broadcast and and urge Nigeria not to protest. Tell us what he has been doing. You know, remind people that you have given one million, uh, uh, one trillion for uh, one, one uh, hundred, uh, I mean, hundred thousand household yes. per each uh, uh, state, which is about three point seven million uh, energy that will benefit from you. Tell us how you have released 10, 10 billion for each state yes. for CNG buses. If at all you have not seen it, you know, you have to tell us all these things and tell us what you are going to do going forward to make sure that Nigerians are getting uh, better because you know Nigeria is and you know it's called renew hope. Nigeria want hope. They want hope. Mm -hmm. Keep giving us a uh, hope. Because if you are silent about it brings about another thing. Because and if you look at the government handlers in terms of um, the social media, you see uh Ononuga, you know if you look at the ways actually uh statements the, the statements you know those things are actually ag are bringing about more tension more and that's why i said they are amplifying this protest than even the protest well, and on on Anuga's case uh there's a report today that um peter obi has actually dragged him to court and uh you know slammed a five billion era uh, defamation lawsuit on him yet Onanuga once again brags to obi that they should meet in court. Don't you think this is rather a very, very wrong move on the part of Onanoga? They are tensions, they are, uh, you know, tempers flaring and all of that. It's rather problematic coming from somebody of that high caliber in government. Well, we wouldn't blame Onanoga because uh, he need to protect the his, image. His, his, not in the president and the federal government uh, policy and what have you. The only thing is that I think they should be cautioned to the extent you take it to. They should verify those uh, facts, have facts that Peter Obi is actually behind the, the protest. Because a Labour Party member may be behind the protest, not Peter. Would be you know, it's two different things. Yes. Then this morning he was saying that uh, he has not seen the official uh, 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 court you know, uh, someone or uh, five billion uh, uh, suit, but I think uh, Peter Obi is doing the right thing too. Two of them is trying to show that yes, you are speaking for federal government, right? But you should not just come and drag me, uh, you know, allegation, you know, that like is alleged. So you should just be cautioned. So yeah. I think uh, they are both doing what they're supposed to do because sometimes we need the, this opposition to also be vibrant because it is it's from the vibrancy of APC that made them to become. Uh, press it, uh, you don't have what they have now. Yes. Well, uh, Doctor, to wrap up on this particular issue, let's quickly uh, take a look at the new Telegraph uh, newspaper. There is a story of uh, interest there, uh, which is still talking about the uh, hardship in Nigeria, no need to protest, uh, according to President Tinubu. And uh, he's saying that he's doing all that he can to bring Sukor to the Nigerian youth. Uh, the writer also states that the president is hinting on working on stipends for unemployed graduates. Well, uh, 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 at this point, do Nigerian graduates need jobs or stipends? Right. I, I, I think, you know, as an economist, we, we don't support palliative damage because it's intervention in nature. So if you give 
stipend give support for three months what happened thereafter you know perhaps if you don't work but you are seeing money there is also you know the uh, that autonomous consumption also have negative uh, effect so for me i think uh, they should do the right thing because this hunger is not only for the youth perhaps if you don't have the money the purchasing power is not there why are we increasing salary from 30 uh thousand to seventy thousand we're actually doing that because you know that thousand is not enough in fact are we calling it living with a take home or minimum wage now that's what we even have to establish so having seventy thousand is not even enough uh, again you know but what do we do we have seen it happening already there it has been passed but the thing is we want to go beyond stipend there should be employment opportunity government should create a enabling environment for people to try by trying we have a better gdp even with good gdp even fair government will realize most uh, much more tax and government will be you know we have been a functional uh, economy I mean, from from records of of what it is like when it comes to government interventions in the country especially uh pertaining the issue of government giving out stipends to people whether the youths whether farmers whether women and children it most likely doesn't end well it's billions of naira are given out but yet people complain that they don't ever get the money so are we are we seeing yet another trend of of promises that don't ever get fulfilled to people well according to what we have been proposed before I think uh, if we are even doing a poverty reduction program, because over time we have had in this uh, first republic, we should be structured. This government uh, do, does not have a structured way of reducing poverty. Recall, even President Mohammed bin Buhari this time have a, a national uh, N NC. Yes. Now this NC have about four programs, and this four program even came to maybe uh, strengthen Nigerian youth, upskill. In Nigeria, you know, we have what is called end teach, end power, end tax, end tech. So all these things, a lot of schemes. Lot of schemes. But the thing is, how do we manage this? Is the problem, you know, policy are uh, some and sort. So if end tech work as it's supposed to be, they are going to pay them for you know, uh, you know for some for three years or so, yeah. and they are then learning. Before you know, three months you'll be skillful. While you are skillful, by the time you are done with the other company will rush to even. To even have so, I think we should go beyond our uh, pay stipend. We should look at sustainable way of managing people, of providing skill that will, you know, actually even your government. Because if you look at me now, the minister of the uh, humanitarian has been out since, and don't know minister, mm -hmm. no minister yet. So all those schemes have been stopped. But government keep giving uh, palliative. No, it's not structured. And when you don't structure such palliative, it won't have a positive effect. So it's really just spend it and in your life. opinion, the, the government should really, really re strategize and come up with a long term plan right. to solve the problem right. that Nigerians are facing. Right. Well, let's uh, also uh, turn our attention to other matters. Uh, let's look at other newspaper stories this morning before we round up on this segment uh, talking about CBN and the fact that it has raised its interest rate to 26.75% uh despite soaring inflation in the country and this can be seen on the front pages of about three national dailies this morning talking about the business times the vanguard newspaper as well as the guardian newspaper let's quickly uh pick up the uh, business times together and the vanguard newspaper on the front page of the business times just below the masthead and below the um graph there uh, the table there you can see CBN raises interest rate to 26.75% despite soaring inflation. Ryder says uh, insecurity in food producing zones, high cost of transportation of farm produce driving inflation. Experts could express his concern on adjustment to the asymmetric corridor around MPR. And on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper, Nasima others kick as CBN hikes interest rate to 26.75%. While capital importation rises 234% to $5.9 billion in the first uh, half of 2024, according to Cardoso. External reserves hit 
37 billion dollars as diaspora remittance rise by 62 percent an npr hike increases uncertainty for businesses again nasima is knocking uh, on cbn well let's uh, finally take a look at the guardian newspaper together this morning on the front page of the guardian newspaper you will find the story weak fiscal inflation weak fiscal support pushes cbn to further rate hikes credit squeeze this is yet another uh, troubling development uh, dr Aliu. what do you make of this new development coming from the cbn well right if you look at uh, yemi kandoso the cbn government right from he became the cbn government he has keep kept increasing the you know the NPR up to where it is now, and, 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 and I think at this point in time, you know, uh, as far as we look at uh, uh, Emi Fili, you know, from his negative uh, uh, optics, he also have some positive uh, optics that we need to to look at. Because if you look at the approach of uh, the CBN government now, it's actually using what we call hawkish approach. So when we say hawkish approach, is sacrificing growth to make sure that it brings down uh, inflation, and that's a serious uh, serious problem because you keep increasing interest rates and when you increase interest you discourage uh industries manufacturers from you know producing more and when you don't produce more it brings about unemployment and when we have unemployment we have a very low uh output which is a, a gdp so i think you should think and tarry on this uh approaches because this approach will lead us to a much more difficult whereby all our infant industry msme manufacturers even some foreign direct investment will not be interested in coming to to this uh, country if you look at from monetary policy also look at it from fiscal policy when you look at what is i mean other uh management when you look at the way that whole thing is being uh, handled you know if you look at all these things it doesn't actually help now his main reason is that he wants to mop up fund from the public but my question today is that does private sector actually have the fund the fund is actually with the federal government and the state government. Yes. You recall that before uh, now, they used to share about 600 billion mm -hmm. monthly. But now, the state and the federal government share 1 point something trillion every year. So where is the money coming? It's actually federal government giving money to giving states. Money to so the they're government. actually using that money for capital projects. Yeah. Good projects. It won't look like this, but it appears maybe the money is finding its way to Forex again. Yes. You know, this now brings the challenge up. So I think it's a wrong notion to assume that money is, is in circulation and is in private sector. Private sector is struggling. So you will do uh, business. I think it's uh, it's not uh, for me. Well, to, to, talking about private sector struggling to to do business, there's there was a report uh, yesterday on the same Guardian newspaper where uh, over thirty thousand jobs were lost to closure of manufacturing firms in the last four years, owing to inflation, right? Rising inflation, right? Uh, but yet still, we see the CBN governor hiking up uh, interest rates. We we are rather having a retrogressive uh, policy coming from there, don't you think so? The, uh, it is it is serious contra contradiction because serious contradiction because you know the cause of our inflation is structured in a uh, problem on which we know the first thing is we have issue of forex. Yes. You know you float the forex and what do you expect? Things we just go high. The second one is the insecurity. It's glaring that Nigerians have issue of security people cannot go to farm yes. and the third one is that you have removed first subsidy so when you remove first subsidy things we have cost push inflation now so i don't know why you keep on hiking the npr and you haven't seen the resultant effect immediately because the statistics is bringing that, that industries are closing day by day if i may be you know the little business we do in our company if you have the big money to actually go into manufacturing it's not the right time you know what we'll do we we'll take that money to go and invest, to go and put in a bank, and we we'll collect the interest yes. rates. We we'll discourage, you know, doing business. So, for what he's doing for me, is killing, and it is wrong at this time. You know why? At this point, that AFC, FTA, African Free Trade area is coming up. You are bringing up such high interest. That means over time, those people uh, that are up and doing, they will now kill our infant industry. Do you know why? They produce at a cheaper rate 
at economic of scale rate, at comparative advantage rate, and they come and sell, sell in Nigeria. Down. So a man in Aba who is producing shoe, we find it difficult to survive because you'll be competing with somebody who have ready energy where he is, government support where he is, you know, and, and power to and export in large quantities. Power to export in large quantities, and you wouldn't be able to stop them because part of what we can is that don't even allow everything to be done in your country. Tell the ASCTFA that no, don't bring textile to Nigeria, don't bring uh, shoes to Nigeria, so that you allow Nigerian infant industry that is engaging in this, certainly, uh, come but we keep increasing our interest rate, discouraging our people to do business. It's quite uh, contradict contradicting. Oh, oh, all right, uh, Dr. Aliu, let's uh, move on to other stories. Now, the federal government uh, is moving to end the Dangote and NNDPRA rift, and uh, it's dragging major stakeholders into uh, the issue. And this is captured on the front pages of this day newspaper as well as the Nigerian News Direct. Let's uh, quickly pick up the this day newspaper together. Uh, on the front page of this day newspaper, uh, there is a caption that reads, FG moves to end Dangote NNDPRA rift meets major industry stakeholders. At Pabio, we will probe, identify and hold saboteurs in petroleum sector accountable. Says it's rescue mission for nation's future. Declare it's not just financial issue, but matter of national security, sovereignty. Highlights hurdles against Nibu's welfare package for women and children. Huriwa asks president to sack NMDPRA boss over Nangote refinery debacle. And on the front page of the Nigerian News Direct, YFG must support Angote Man Otedola additional speak out as reps urge President Tinubu to suspend NMDPRA boss. Dr. Aliu, a common, a common uh, line, interesting line there, the, the call for the sack of the NMDPRA boss, considering uh, the intense rifts that the organization has had with the Dangote refinery recently. Right. If, 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 if you ask me, who is our Minister of uh, Petroleum? Well, the President. Who it is the President. So if this is happening under his nose, you know, it's quite, uh, it's, it's difficult to, to understand because President well, I'm actually with our Minister of Petroleum. So, yes. and these people are under his purview. So, for me, first and foremost, um, I want Nigerians to be careful. You know why? Dangote was in cement industry. Yes. And we have seen what happened in cement industry. It appeared more of cartel and monopoly yes. in that area. For me, if you ask me, I see Dangote coming up with a kind of cheap blackmail. Why am I saying this? M MDPRA is a regulatory authority. So if they said this is what we want, I expect Dangote to agree with the compliance as it is. It's just like a NAVDAC telling some pharmaceutical industry to do A, B, C before they can do business. And you are saying, you know, because I have also saw National Assembly and others. You know, trying to, you know, Uriwa, Otedola, you know, all of them are saying, trying to make trying statements. To, the the uh, fact is that, in as much as Dangote is going to, is our best businessman in Africa, you know, and we think it should survive, but it should also fall. You know what, what's happening? According to source, the Dangote has announced diesel can only be the 6 million uh, barrel right. per day, yeah. and we will be really like 15 million. So, MMDPR have to open gateway for importation to cushion it. Would you say because you are now in business, other people that want to do business around should not. Should, should, should not. So I think President Bola Metrubu, she came in and, 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 and for an M MMDPR rate, I, I, I don't know what they are actually doing. But the boss should be they are, the, they are the one. And they are even representing the Mr. President because that's how it simply means. So for them to say they should caution them, in as much as I wouldn't want them to also go beyond normalcy because you could see Dangote has also come up and say they have a blend uh uh you know refinery or so what have you malta you know, there's a lot of uh, information accusations, accusations, accusations and back. but i think Dangote should do the needful to actually embark on the business because i also saw a news this morning yes. that gabon uh president is inviting Dangote 
to come and invest. Establish, uh, the, the Do you know the population of Gabon? I'm not sure it's up to 2.5 million. Which states can you compare Gabon to in Nigeria? Nigeria. That is around that 2 million. So, when you are saying you want to go outside and do business, and you are using that to like a threat to Nigeria, it's quite funny. Because we have 200 million people, people yeah. here. Yeah, you have a larger market. We are not here. talking about 2.1. We are still your best market. So, I think uh, in as much as we love Dangote, and we are happy that it's going to bring a forex balance, a lot of things, employment opportunity, I also want him to caution, you know, and he should do the needful, and allow other players to come into the business. We don't want monopoly. All right, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ali Elias. Uh, ending it there with We Don't Want Monopoly. Uh, well, that has been the newspaper review segment this morning. We have uh, touched on a lot of national issues, and yet we are still going to be discussing the new national minimum wage and its effect in the workplace.